Hey guys, Zim's Jeep here. Got a uh, mower maintenance video for you today that I'm going to be doing on my Skig 36 inch Advantage mower that has the Kawasaki FC420V 14 horse engine on it. Alright, I purchased a uh, kit online, I'll show you that in a second. We're going to be installing all the uh, items that were included in that kit onto the engine. Uh, we're also going to be greasing the, um, the wheels and all the uh, bearings on this as well, all the grease fittings. Um, and just uh, anything it might need to get it ready for the cutting season. So uh, let me take you over and I'll show you what I had purchased online. Okay, so here's what we're going to be using to do this maintenance on this uh, mower. I did a little research online and I uh, came across this. It's an actual kit that uh, Jack's Small Engines uh, sells. Um, it's a uh, complete maintenance kit for the Kawasaki 14 uh, horse engine. And inside this comes with a new air filter with the uh, foam uh, element on the outside of it. Comes with a new fuel filter. and oil filter and a new uh, spark plug alright I think this costs like twenty five dollars or something like that um, of course you're going to need a bottle of oil um, I have a new uh, quarter inch fuel line here. Now this isn't something you have to replace every year obviously but uh, my mower I think was manufactured in 2001 and uh, I believe the line on there is original so I've really dry rotted and uh, the last time I changed the fuel filter which obviously sits in line um, the hose seemed kind of brittle and I think it's time to, uh, to change it before we have a problem. The only other thing I purchased was a new uh, fuel cap um, last year uh, mine was loose on the top of the um, tank and I ran it over with the mower and chopped it up pretty bad so we'll replace that while we're at it. And for any of you guys out there that are interested here is the part number for this. It is part number 785-664 and that again is for the Kawasaki FC420V 14 horse engine made by this company right here, Stens. All right. One other thing I forgot to mention, I also have a new set of uh, uh, mulching blades here also that we're going to uh, be putting on. And those are made by Oregon, uh, part number 596-344. Uh, 18 inch blade. All right, so uh, let's get started. Alright, so our first item of business here, let's dump the oil on this, and uh, that is done with the oil drain plug right here. Skeg actually uh, thought this out and put a hole here so the oil can drain down. I got an oil uh, drain pan uh, underneath there to try to catch it the best we can, so uh, let's loosen this up and we'll let the oil drain out. This um, bolt on here or the uh, oil drain plug I should say is half inch so we'll just uh, pull that out and there you go let the oil all, uh, drain out if you can see that but it is in fact draining you can go ahead and loosen up the oil dipstick that'll let air in the top and let the oil siphon out a little bit better on the bottom Okay, we're on the opposite side of the engine now from the oil drain plug, and here's our oil filter. So we can go ahead and pull this off now. Um, what you can do is, it's usually on here kind of tight. If you don't have an oil filter uh, wrench for this little filter, you can just take a big pair of uh, you know channel locks. And kind of hard to do with the camera, but you can get this around here, and you can crank this sucker loose. And there it goes, starting to turn. Get yourself some old rags and stick it under here because you're going to get some uh, residual oil dripping off. And there you go. This guy will come right off here. 
got to work kind of quick because the oil is going to cut pouring out. And there you go, oil filter is off. Okay, while we're waiting for the oil to finish draining, we can go ahead and uh, change our air filter out. That's fairly easy to do. You just got to loosen up these two wing nuts on the top of the uh, uh, air filter housing. Those go right down through the housing into the carburetor. All right. Just keep loosening them. And then what's going to happen is you'll be able to pop this whole top off. All right. Here is the air filter, the old one. You can see it's kind of dirty and uh, dusty. Chuck that out. What you can also do is you can pop the rest of this assembly off. And more than likely you're going to have some debris inside here. You can go ahead and bang that out and clean it out good. You can even go a step further and take a rag and just you know, wipe it down the best you can in there. Okay, you can even do this in here a little bit. Clean that all out. You obviously don't want to be getting dirt down inside the carburetor. And once that's all done, you can go put this back on top of this. We get our new uh, air filter. All right, and that just pops right down on top of the uh, the plastic housing there. And we'll go ahead and pop our uh, top back on this. Line everything back up. All right, and tighten it back down. Alright guys, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and replace the fuel filter. And normally this is all you'll be doing in this section here is just loosening up these two clamps here and pulling this guy out. But if you remember, I told you I'm going to replace the fuel line from the carburetor right up to the fuel tank here. Alright, um, so what's basically involved with that, I'll take you off the tripod here. Alright. If you have a tank of gas, what you're going to want to do is, underneath the tank here is a shutoff, which is this guy right here, if you can see it. Alright, and what you're going to go ahead and do is just turn that like that, and that will stop the flow of fuel from the tank down the hose to the filter here. Now all it's a matter of doing is there is a little cinch clamp right there, it's not going to focus, but there's one right there. You obviously have one on the fuel filter there on this side and there's another one on the inlet port of the carburetor which is right there. We're gonna go ahead and squeeze those and pull this line out. Now we're gonna get some fuel coming out obviously just have your old rag ready to catch it. Alright guys, I didn't get that part on film of uh, basically getting the other side of this hose off. Um, on the bottom of the tank there's an elbow where that valve is and this thing was like stuck on there really good after I got the clamp off. It was, you know, it didn't want to budge and you want to be careful because that stuff under there is all plastic. So what I went ahead and did was I just gave it a little slice on the hose with a knife. Alright, and as you can see there, and that loosens it up where you can pull it off. Don't muscle it off. I'm glad I looked under that. That's all plastic, like I said. I thought it was maybe a metal connection, but it's not. All right, so uh, just a little tip for you. All right, so what we can go ahead and do now is we can mock up the new um, new hose. And so to do that, we're just going to use the old hose, which I got down here on the floor. And we're just going to basically just you know, match up and get our lengths of the hose that we need. Alright, and uh, go ahead and cut it. Now, you can cut this with a saw. You can cut it with a pair of wire cutters, which is what I'm going to do. 
cups fairly easily. You know, there you go. That's the length we need for that. And instead of these um, cinch clamps, which I really don't like, I'm going to go ahead and put it on a real hose clamp. Uh, that should hold it on there a little bit better. So, um, you know, pretty simple now. We're just going to go ahead and obviously put the clamp on there. We're going to go ahead and attach this end to the underside of the fuel tank. We're going to put our filter on this end. As you can see here on the old one, then another little short piece of hose with two clamps going over to the carburetor. So let's get that on there now. Alright, so I went ahead and got the hose clamped onto the bottom of the fuel tank. We have our new uh, fuel filter here now. Now, just one thing to pay mind to, this has an arrow right here, as you can see. Alright, showing you that it's pointing this way, that's the direction of the fuel flow. Obviously the fuel is flowing from the tank down through the hose and into the carburetor, so you want this guy pointed like this. Alright. Um, so we got our clamp here, we're going to go ahead and push on our fuel filter. Again, just being somewhat careful, because remember this stuff's only plastic. Here I'm just uh, finishing tightening up the uh, clamps now. Uh, getting everything nice and tight so the gas obviously doesn't leak out of any of these uh, joints. Um, that's really it for this portion. I guess we can go ahead and uh, put our new oil filter on here now at this point. It's been uh, draining out long enough. Um, similar to a car, when you go ahead and do an oil change on a car, what you're supposed to go ahead and do is you know, take a little bit of oil. Here's your filter obviously and just oil the, uh, the ring on here. That'll give it a nice seal. Alright, um, I don't know if it's absolutely necessary to do it on, a, on this, but in the car you always add a little bit of oil to the filter there, just so everything, uh, when you first start the engine back up, is primed and ready to go. And uh, of course the trick here is just to start screwing this on quickly before the oil starts uh, running back out. All right, we got that on there. Hand tightens, that's all you got to do. Nothing more than that, it's unnecessary. We'll go ahead, we'll put our drain plug back on the other side and we will start filling it with oil. Okay, guys, one other minor thing I actually did here before we're going to move on is I put a zip tie on the fuel line. The old one, when I took it off, actually had a zip tie here as well. That's just to give it a little support so this whole assembly here isn't flopping around when you're mowing. So it's just basically zip tied onto uh, this bracket that holds the throttle linkage on to the, uh, the block. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and move on, like I said, to the oil. Alright guys, I just went ahead and I put the drain plug back on. Uh, really nothing to this now, we're just going to go ahead and put our funnel on top of our... Uh, oil fill and we're going to start uh, adding oil. going to go ahead and check where we're at at this point. Uh, one thing I noticed actually on the dipstick here it says for correct oil level do not turn cap on thread. So that's something I actually never realized. Glad I never screwed anything up doing that. But So basically just want you to drop that down in there and we'll get our reading. And uh, yeah, I'm right at the uh, the full line at this point. Um, basically, what it's saying is oil add to full, which is 0.6 pints. So I guess that's what I got in there now, or 0.3 liters. So um, I think what we have to do at this point, we have a safe amount of oil in there now. Um, we're gonna have to take this outside, start it up, let the oil flow into the uh, the oil filter, and through that whole assembly there and more than likely we'll, we'll get another measurement and we're going to have to maybe add some more.
<laughs> Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and check our oil levels now. We'll see where we're at. Okay, for you guys that were wondering, here's what the old oil looks like. Uh, kind of black. So, yeah, I think it was definitely time to uh, change this. Next step, let's go ahead and replace the spark plug. Got a uh, 13 16 socket on here with an extension. I'm gonna pop the boot off. And then it's just a matter of getting in here. Loosen this guy up. And uh, there is our old spark plug. So, uh, yeah, I'd say it's definitely time to change that. Got our uh, new one, if I can find where it went. Yep, got it right down here. Just match them up, make sure that they're uh, the same. And they are, we're looking good here. Now it's just a matter of threading this guy back on here. Really the important thing to note obviously is you don't want to cross thread it. So start it with your hand. So you know it's going in good. Switch over to the socket. Thread it in hand tight. Just to be sure it is going in nice. And that went in really good. Switch over to your ratchet. And just suck it down. Don't have to go too tight. Really no point to that. Just enough where it's not going to back out. And just put your boot back on there. <clears throat> That's on. Make sure you're not touching the uh, muffler, obviously, with the wire, which you're not, which is good. And that's that. Next step, we're going to go ahead and install the uh, new blades on here. Alright guys, to get these blades off, what we got to do is just uh, pop the uh, cover off the um, housing here, or the deck I should say. Alright, that just pops right off there. Alright, and then basically what you have here Is you got the bolts on top of your spindles here. This has got to come off, and this has got to come off. All right, and what you do is you get onto here, and the bolt head for the spindle is obviously on each one of the blades. All right, that's a 15th, 16th bolt. Now, I'm the type of guy that if I got power tools, you better believe I'm going to use them. I got my 15th, 16th socket on my uh, impact gun, and I'm going to blast those things off with that. If you don't have an impact gun, obviously you don't need one for this. You could just use a um, um, you know, a socket on a uh, ratchet and it'll work fine. And just get yourself a wrench and hold the top of the spindle. Alright, I got a big adjustable uh, wrench here I'm going to hold the top of that with and we're going to blast them off with the impact gun underneath. One thing of note here, keep track of your spacers, your spindle washers. This is what adjusts your blade height, so you want to make sure you put it back the way you took it off if you want to keep the same blade height that you had. Alright, so in my case I had two of these guys up top, and pop this through. And as you can see here, I got three on top of the blade underneath. Alright, so we're going to make sure we put those back on the same way. And, you know, if you want to keep the same height. 
Obviously, it's also important to make both blades the same so you get a, have a proper cut. And uh, these are the old blades. They've been on there a while. I sharpened them a few times and it's time for some new ones. You get a big washer that sits underneath the, uh, the blade on the spindle bolt. That stays. Okay, obviously blade goes on like this. Not like that. Like this. You want the taper on the blade going up. Put your spindle bolt back through. Put your three washers back on. And pop it back up through the spindle shaft. Remember, up top, put both the spindle washers back on. And then find where the bolt went here. Pull down back here. And we'll just put that back on. And we'll go over to the other side. I'm not going to tighten it yet. I like to basically reassemble the one side. So I'm going to take the other side off. I remember how I had the setting. Okay, again, two spindle washers and a nut. I'm going to go ahead and knock this bolt through. Having a thumbs up for using a uh, crescent wrench as a uh, hammer. Works every time. Same thing as the other side. Washer, spindle bolt. Through your blade. Blade with the blade pointing down towards the bottom. Three washers on your spindle. Spindle back up through the spindle shaft. Two more spacer washers back up top. And finally, you're not. And let's go ahead and sock both these in. Not too tight. This is obviously delivering a lot of torque here. Really unnecessary for this. But it is in fact easier. And that's it. Get the mower off the bucket now. Get the saddle. One other thing you can do at this point, if you got an air compressor, hook the air hose back up, and I got a blow gun here. Shut that off, it's a little too noisy. Then as a final step, blow all this garbage out of your garage so your wife doesn't yell at you. All right, we'll throw the, uh, the cover back on there. And we're gonna be at the point now where we'll just check the air and the, the tires, and I'll show you guys how to grease up all the uh, Zerk fittings on this. Alright guys, I actually jumped ahead of myself there. You don't want to put this cover back on here yet because there's actually some grease fittings on these spindle shafts that you want to grease. Alright, so you got one right here. This is uh, one of the uh, spindle shafts for the, one of the blades. 
You actually got three grease points under here as far as I know. What you want to do before you actually start pumping grease in here is just take a, um, a pick. All right, right here I got one, if you can see. And you want to just go ahead and insert this into the hole in the zerk fitting. Work it a few times just to free it up if it might be stuck. All right, then take your rag before you go ahead and put the grease gun on here and just clean the actual zerk fitting off so you're not so you're not going to be putting any of the junk that might be on the outside of that into the uh, zerk fitting and clogging it up later on. All right. So it's just a matter of taking your grease gun, putting this on the zerk fitting, and pumping away. I see some grease coming out the other side, so that means we are good on that one. Got another one here on the blade clutch. Again, same thing. Work this in a little bit. Free it up if it might be stuck. Take your rag, clean it off. Put your grease gun on it and pump away. Okay, see some grease coming out of there. We're good on that one. Wipe off the excess. And we got this other blade spindle here, and I'll show you a few more of the other ones, but I'm not going to show you every one of these. This gets kind of repetitive. I'll make the video too long. All right, on the front casters, both of them, you have two each. You got one here on the top spindle, and you got one down here on the wheel. So, same thing with those. Free them up. Give a little bit of a wipe and pump some grease in. You can see it oozing out the top here. That means we're full. Let's go ahead and do this one down on this spindle. Okay, we're full on that now. We'll do the same thing for the other wheel, and then I'll show you the ones on the back side. Okay, on the back side of the mower, you got one down here on the rear wheel. Clean that off. Same thing, pump that up with grease. You got one here on the uh, spindle for the uh, pulleys for the, the drive for the belts. Um, let me see if you got any more back here. And then obviously you have two to the same on the other side. Okay guys, I found two more actually. Back here on the transmission on either side of it on the spindle. You got one here and one on the other side. It's the same deal with those. Clean them out and grease them up. Alright, so I did all the uh, the grease fittings on here. All we got left to do now is I'm going to throw some air in the tires and that's uh, going to wrap up uh, the maintenance on this. Let's get that done and then I'll give you uh, a little cutting video in the backyard to see how this guy works. Two other things worth mentioning here. The first being the brakes. All right. Now, for those of you familiar with commercial mowers, you know that when you pull up on this handle, it in turn is supposed to lock the wheel on that side of the, the handle as well. Obviously, you have one on each side. If it's not locking the wheel completely and it's still a little sloppy, meaning that you could push the mower when the handle's pulled up, what you do is down here there's a clevis pin what you do is you pull that out then this rod slips out of here and all it's a matter of doing is you got this nut on this threaded rod if it's not locking the wheel what you do is you just thread this down in other words this this entire nut assembly here threads down on this rod by turning it and as you can see it used to be up in this position here on on my mower I threaded it down a little bit to this position now. Then all you do is you just reattach it, pull your handle up, and make sure your wheel now locks, which mine does. And that, that's all it's a matter of doing for the uh, the brake adjustment on these mowers. And obviously, like I said, you have one of these on each side. You have one on this wheel, and then of course there's one on this side as well. And you want to uh, try to keep both of them as equal as possible uh, when doing your adjustments. And finally, the last thing you're going to want to check is the drive system for the mower as well, okay? Uh, what you want to do to start this process is 
unlock it out of the neutral position and put it in drive, obviously with the mower off. And what SCAG calls for in their manual is when it is in the unlock position, you got this rod and here is the bottom of the neutral safety latch. They call for a three quarter inch gap between the bottom of the rod and the bottom of this opening here. All right. So to achieve that, you follow this rod down and here you have another uh, connecting nut going to the drive mechanism. You pull this pin out of the back and very similar to the brakes, this will pop out and you're going to adjust this nut up and down on this threaded rod to achieve the proper gap up here. So as you can see I pulled this out of here and you can see that it, you got full range of adjustment on this now on the top here. So it's just a matter of adjusting that to get your three quarter of an inch gap between those two positions up there. Alright, then you just basically you, you pop this back in and put your pin back in. Uh, the only real critical thing you got to keep in mind with this, you're not only adjusting uh, the position of this up here, you're affecting the, the, the tracking of the mower when you're when you're in drive mowing. Meaning that you have to adjust each side equally because if you don't, what you're going to wind up happening is you're either going to be pulling to the left or pulling to the right depending on the adjustment that you have on the, on the rod here. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Keep both these rods on this side and the other side equal in adjustment because that will affect if the mower is going to pull or run straight. Uh, the other thing that uh, could affect that is the air pressure in your tires. If you have a tire that's low, uh, the mower is going to pull to that side when it's running. So keep that in mind as well. Air up your tires for you to do the adjustment of your, um, your tracking of the mower. Alright guys, that pretty much wraps it up. Got any questions or comments? Leave them down below. I'll try to answer them as best I can for you. And uh, thanks for watching.